Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. Cake on the mic, cake on the mic. Oh, that's the intro. Sacramento, Sacramento, California, born and raised. And Antelope is where I spend most of my days. You talk bad about my team, you must be a clown. This is Keek on the mic, so you know you better bear down. Bear down. Hey, what's going on, Bears fans? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Keek on the Mic, the podcast all about the Chicago Bears. Like always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Before I go any further with today's episode of Keek on the Mic, I just want to remind you guys that Keek on the Mic, this podcast is super close to 5,000 subscribers. And once again, if you're new to the channel, once this podcast hits to that 5,000 subscriber milestone, I will be doing a massive giveaway of a signed Darnell Mooney jersey and a signed Cole Komet helmet. So make sure you're sharing every single Keek on the Mic episode with every single Bears fan that you know and tell them to subscribe to the channel so I can give out these awesome prizes to some very loyal Keek on the Mic listeners. I'm super excited to give out those prizes. So today on the podcast, I am super excited excited for and I feel like we're gonna have a really good conversation there's really no reports today we are just going to be breaking down the sixth six new additions uh to the Chicago Bears roster um that we added via the waiver wire and obviously the Chicago Bears scored some big names on the waiver wire yesterday and they added six new players off the waiver wire which was the most in the NFL and obviously this wasn't surprising whatsoever because obviously Ryan Poles said over a week ago that there was a good chance the Chicago Bears roster will look totally different before the start of the season. So obviously the Chicago Bears set their initial 53-man roster and then you have the waiver wire and then obviously teams have the choice to add more players off that waiver wire and the Bears were obviously busy um, during this waiver wire process, like I said adding six new players to the Chicago Bears roster, which was the most in the NFL. Um, so out of those six players, this is who the Chicago Bears added to our football team. Offensive lineman Alex Leatherwood, D-tackle Armin Watts, which those were our two big additions um, out of the six uh, from the wa- waiver wire. We all also added defensive back Josh Blackwell, DN Kingsley Jonathan, linebacker Sterling Weatherford, and tight end Trayvon Wesco. So, Obviously, to add to, the, to add these new additions, the Bears waived rookie old lineman Zachary Thomas, D tackle Kyrus Tonga, linebacker Caleb Johnson, and cornerback Duke Shelley. They also cut linebacker Joe Thomas, but instantly put Joe Thomas back on the practice squad and placed Tajay Sharp on the IR, which means Tajay Sharp is out for the season with a rib injury. So when I look at these six additions to the Chicago Bears roster. I can anticipate that all six players will probably make the final roster in some sort of capacity, maybe as deaf pieces, maybe as special teams players. Um, I can definitely anticipate guys like maybe Armin Watts being maybe a starting nose tackle for the Chicago Bears 4-3 defense. I'll get into that, into that a little bit in a little bit. Um, but overall, I feel like all six players can definitely help this Chicago Bears roster improve. Obviously, Matt Eberflus with came on in, in his press conference and clearly said that he ex- he is excited about the players that we added to the roster, and he feels like these players will help this roster improve. And, and like we said, we all know this, that Ryan Poles is going to continue to try to make the Chicago Bears roster better. It is no secret. He has stuck to his plan. And obviously, by adding six new guys, that tells you that the Bears des- desperately needed um, some depth in some certain areas. Maybe they needed some replacement in certain areas. They just weren't comfortable uh, with what their roster was looking like. And that's how it should be when you're kind of building a team, That how you want it. You should always maintain um, making sure you're adding the best talent possible to your 53-man roster. So today on the podcast, I am going to break down in some detail Um, of these six new players that we added to the Chicago Bears roster and kind of just break them down and what they will offer uh, to our football team. So starting off with offensive lineman Alex Leatherwood, obviously this is the big addition of of the day um, as in terms of yesterday when we picked him up off the waiver wire. And uh, like I said, this is the Bears' biggest addition on the waiver wire. Leatherwood was the 17th overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft by the Raiders. And after just playing one year 
uh, with the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders decided to release Alex Leatherwood, and obviously that was uh, the big news of yesterday uh, of the other day's cut down uh, to the 53 man roster in the entire NFL. So it was quite a bit of a surprise that the Raiders just basically said, you know what, we're going to give up on him. Uh, and we're in fact, just going to cut Alex Leatherwood. Obviously they tried to attempt to trade him. Uh, and I guess they got 32 no's. And what's even more shocking is that the Chicago bears were the only team that put in a waiver for Alex Leatherwood. No other team won him, which is so, which to me is so surprising, you know, and when you look at Alex Leatherwood, he is definitely a project and and someone that needs to develop some more. Um, but when you look at Alex Leatherwood, he is only 23 years old and he still is very talented and raw. Once again, he just needs to be developed. He's definitely a project. And even though when you look at his rookie season, um, it wasn't a good one whatsoever. He struggled mightily. You know, it just wasn't a good season for Leatherwood. But when I look at Leatherwood's situation, the Raiders didn't really do him any favors. When you look at his natural position, he's a natural left tackle. Obviously, when you look at the Chicago Bears roster, obviously Braxton Jones, it looks like he has that left tackle spot locked down. So it looks like Leatherwood won't be left tackle for the Chicago Bears. But when you look at his natural position, he's a natural left tackle. But the Raiders started him out at right tackle for the first couple of games last season, and then they instantly pushed him in to right guard. And I don't think he is a fit at guard. Maybe the Bears develop him and maybe he competes um, at that right guard spot. Maybe he comes in and competes uh, with Larry Borum at that right tackle spot. But I think for Leatherwood to have the most success in the NFL, I think he needs to be at one of the tackle positions. Maybe, hopefully not, Braxton Jones gets hurt. Obviously, you don't want to see that. But maybe Braxton Jones gets hurt and he fits in that left tackle. We don't know. Uh, but obviously, the Raiders didn't do him any favors because his natural position is the tackle spot. So I anticipate the Bears letting him get some reps and compete at the right tackle position with Larry Borum. Obviously, like I said, he is raw. He is young. He's only 23 years old. Uh, so he still needs to develop. But I think the more reps he gets and the more comfortable he gets, uh, I think I could definitely see him fitting in at that right tackle position. And obviously being a first round pick and basically being released um, after one season, obviously his confidence is low. His body language is going to show that he's he's lost a lot of confidence. So I think it's going to be the Chicago Bears coaching staff's job to build this player back up and develop him the right way, because obviously the Raiders gave up on him really quick. So obviously I can definitely guarantee that his confidence level is definitely very, very low. So that is one of the reasons why Matt Eberflus feels confident about adding a guy like Alex Leatherwood because um, he has a lot of faith in the Chicago Bears coaching staff. He feels that Chris Morgan, offensive line coach for the Chicago Bears, will be able to bring this guy in and develop him the right way and hopefully um, compete for a starting job maybe in the near future uh, for the Chicago Bears offensive line. But overall, I feel like this is um, a very low risk move. Obviously, the Chicago Bears take over uh, his rookie contract, so they have control of him for, I think, the next three seasons. So if this works out, this is, could be a massive steal for the Chicago Bears. And I know a lot of people will look back at his rookie season, but you can't just take that one season and give up on a guy like this. When I look at Alex Leatherwood's situation, think about what the Chicago Bears just recently did with Tevin Jenkins, right? Things weren't working out at right tackle. He got demoted. They pushed him in the right guard. And now it looks like things are working for Tevin Jenkins. Same thing with Braxton Jones, right? He's a fifth round rookie, right? And now he's going to be starting at left tackle. That shows you that Ryan Poles and this coaching staff knows how to develop um, talent, right? So let's not give up on Alex Leatherwood quite yet. Like I said, He's only 23 years old, and he still has a lot of raw talent, but it's going to be up to the Chicago Bears uh, to make sure they develop him the right way. So I'm excited to see um, what they do with Alex Leatherwood, but I definitely think this could possibly be a massive steal for the Chicago Bears. Moving on to the next addition that they added via waiver wire is D-Tackle Armin Watts. And when I look at Watts, this was actually my favorite pickup um, for Ryan Poles and the Chicago Bears. Obviously, when you look at Watts, he is 6'5", 307 pounds, and he's only 26 years old. And it's always good when you can take a solid player from your arch rival like the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, uh, the Minnesota Vikings fans were upset about this move, um, and this was definitely a surprise cut throughout the NFL by the uh, by the Minnesota Vikings. And the only reason why they cut him is because they're switching to a 3-4 defense and Armin Watts um, fits more in a 4-3 scheme. And obviously 
Watts coming to Chicago is kind of like an upgrade at the nose tackle position. And that's why I think they got rid of Kyrus Tonga because obviously Watts is an upgrade over Kyrus Tonga. When you look at Armin Watts last season, he kind of had like a little mini breakout season for the Minnesota Vikings in that 4-3 scheme that they used to run. He had 46 total tackles, five sacks, and two forced fumbles and nine starts for the Vikings in 2021. So when I look at a guy like Armin Watts, um, I think he will fit perfectly, obviously, in the 4-3 scheme um, that we are going to have here in Chicago as he will be able to shoot the gaps, um, and, and he's quick enough to do that. And I anticipate that he will be a starter alongside alongside Justin Jones. So I definitely think this was a big pickup. This pickup definitely got me pumped up and excited. And obviously, we needed to upgrade um, – at the defensive line position, obviously, I think there's been a lot of people um, kind of worried about the defensive line, but I definitely think this is a upgrade in the right direction. Obviously, I liked Kyrus Tonga. I wish that they were able to bring him back maybe on the 53-man roster or maybe the practice squad. It doesn't look like that's going to happen, um, but I definitely think that we needed to upgrade the defensive line position, and I think they did that um, by acquiring Armin Watts via the waiver wire. The third guy that we picked up is defensive back Josh Blackwell. Uh, Blackwell is a 23-year-old undrafted free agent from the Philadelphia Eagles, and he spent most of the preseason with the Philadelphia Eagles playing the slot corner position. And obviously, when you look at the Chicago Bears, uh, they have depth concerns at that spot, at that, obviously, that nickel cornerback spot. Um, and I think the Bears view Josh Blackwell as an upgrade to Duke Shelley. Obviously, once they... <laughs> added Josh Blackwell from the uh, waiver wire. They instantly released Duke Shelley. Um, and I feel that he is a slightly better athlete than Duke Shelley. Um, and when you look at a guy like Josh Blackwell, I think he'll also compete uh, on special teams. So I think when you look at a guy like Blackwell, this is just definitely a deaf piece that will come in and compete in the cornerback room, especially for that nickel spot, especially when you consider a guy like Tavon Young being injured. Um, obviously Thomas Graham is on the practice squad. Hopefully Thomas Graham can move back up to the 53 man roster soon. But obviously uh, the bears had a lot of concerns in terms of death uh, for that nickel cornerback spot. And I think Josh Blackwell will fit that role perfectly. Looking at the fourth edition via the waiver wire, they added D.N. Kinsley Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan was an undrafted free agent out of Syracuse, and he signed with the Buffalo Bills and had a, a decent preseason, uh, racking up five pressures on 39 pass attempts. And when you look at Jonathan, he is more known for his good size. He is 6'4", 260 pounds, and he's a, a very intelligent football player. But I think there were some concerns about him out of Syracuse that, yes, he is intelligent and has good size, but how would that translate uh, to the NFL. This is a guy that still needs to be developed. And once again, Ryan Poles has a lot of faith in his coaching staff that they're going to be able to develop their players. And and I think that's what Ryan Poles is baking on. And Jonathan is no different. He needs to develop a little bit more and it's going to be up to the coaches um, to build this player up and develop him the right way. So hopefully um, he can compete for maybe compete on the D line and maybe also be a special teamer. But at the moment, I think as long as the Chicago Bears coaching staff develop him the right way, he could offer D-line depth and uh, obviously special teams helps as well. So uh, I think I definitely like this move at, in terms of um, depth pieces uh, on the defense of line. The fifth guy that we added, and this is uh, a really interesting add, is linebacker Sterling Weatherford. He's a 23-year-old 23 23-year-old 23 uh, undrafted free agent uh and he had a big standout season in the preseason for the Colts at the linebacker position. He had 18 tackles, an interception, and a pass breakup. And and this is this is a guy that is, is just a promising young linebacker. And uh, I think he will get a chance to compete within that linebacking room. And obviously, he's coming from the Colts. Uh, Chris Ballard, when the Bears picked him up the via waiver wire, he was definitely upset. He said that one definitely hurt because they valued Sterling Weatherford. Um in a high regard, and they wanted to bring him back on the practice squad, but obviously the Bears picked him up via waiver wire. And obviously, when you look at Matt Eberflus, he is a defense guy, but he specializes in developing linebackers, especially young linebackers. So I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do um, with Sterling Weatherford. And and now you're looking at the linebacker room, right? And there's a lot of in inexperience there, but we have a lot of young linebackers that, it, once again, if the, if the coaching staff develops develops them the right way, we can have something promising here. Obviously, you look at already Jack Sanborn. Now you had a guy like Sterling Weatherford. Of course, you have Roquan Smith, Nicholas Morrow, Matthew Adams. So 
that's young outside of Roquan Smith, that's young and inexperienced. But I think I have a lot of belief in Matt Eberflus and the rest of and the rest of the coaching staff to develop these guys the right way um, and make sure they get them up to speed and make sure they can hopefully compete at a lot a high level um, for years to come. So I definitely think Sterling Weatherford was a was an interesting pickup for the Chicago Bears, but I think. Once again, I think he's a promising young linebacker, and I think the, the Chicago Bears coaching staff, I have a lot of faith in them that they will um, develop him the right way. The last addition was tight end Trayvon Wesco. Uh, Wesco adds much needed depth at the tight end. Obviously, when you look at the tight end position, we only had two tight ends on the roster, um, Cole Komet and Ryan Griffin. So obviously, they needed to add at least one more linebacker um, to that tight end room. And what Wesco brings is... Uh, really good blocking. Obviously, when you look at the tight end room, the Chicago Bears need more blocking help at that tight end position. And Wesco has proved for the last three seasons um, that this is something that he can do. So Wesco will bring um, that blocking that we desperately need in that tight end room. And I think it was a solid addition um, to make sure we sure up that tight end depth in that tight end room. So overall, when I look at these six additions, um, I really like the guys that Ryan Poles picked up. It's an intriguing group of young talent that can improve this roster and add much needed depth at multiple positions. Obviously, when you look at the two big additions that we added and Alex uh, Leatherford, uh, Weatherford, Leatherford, <laughs> sorry, Alex Leatherford and uh, Armin Watts, I think those guys can compete for starting roles. And maybe if they develop these other guys the right way, they can eventually maybe be starters on the team as well. But I think what Ryan Poles was trying to accomplish um, here was to make sure the Bears also had solid depth behind their starters. And I think he did an excellent job at doing so. So I'm excited to see how all these six guys pan out for the Chicago Bears, but I definitely think that uh, Ryan Poles is still not done. Like I mentioned all the time, Ryan Poles is going to continue to build this roster. I'm out, I don't think he's ever going to be satisfied, and I think that we had to give Ryan Poles uh, kudos to what he's doing to the Chicago Bears roster. So, so I'm excited to see um, as he continues to build this roster um, how this team turns out and and we're getting ever closer to that uh, week one matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. So I'm excited to see the Chicago Bears play a real deal football game. So before I let you guys go, let me ask you guys this. How do you guys like the moves that Ryan Poles made on the waiver wire? Let me know down below in the comment section. Before I let you guys go, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification to catch all Bears content right here on the podcast. Make sure you follow me on all my social media platforms. Make sure you share this episode of Kick on the Mic with every single Bears fan that you know. But other than that, I'll be back for our all new Bears podcast right here on Kick on the Mic. Thanks guys and bear down. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic. You ain't about it, you ain't about it, you ain't kick on the mic.